Hey, you guys, I'm Crystal Sherell from Indie Artist School. Welcome to the Singer's Arsenal. Today, I wanted to talk about how to know your current vocal regimen right now is keeping you stagnant and stopping your growth. Before we hop into the specifics on this, I think it's really important to differentiate the difference between a vocal warm up and a vocal regimen. That way we can both be on the same page. A vocal warm up is what you do when you just want to warm up your vocal cords. Things like breathing, stretching, even that raspberry you do that or lip trills. That's not a vocal exercise, that's a vocal warm up. Now, the vocal regimen is the whole thing. Vocal exercises are meant to condition your voice. It's the thing that you're doing to help your voice get better at something. So it's not just to wake up your vocal cords, it's things like exercises that help you expand your vocal range. Uh, it's exercises like improving vocal tone and helping you bridge the gap between vocal registers, exercises to help you stop cracking, exercises to help you improve your agility, exercises that are done right are meant to help you get better and fix your vocal problems that you have right now sometimes what happens is <laughs> you know you see exercise here you see an exercise there you try it on for size and you do them all and you're like okay i'm taking care of my voice the big thing that you need to know is are you being challenged enough first of all so are these exercises something that you're growing through or are they too difficult? Meaning you do them and they're very hard for you to do well, okay? Or third, are they just helping you maintain? If they're just helping you maintain, that means they're helping you not lose what you already got. Now, there's nothing wrong with maintenance, right? Maintenance is important. It depends on where you are in your vocal transformation journey. If you've already put in a lot of work and you've seen leaps and bounds with your vocal growth in the beginning, chances are you've learned a lot of techniques that have helped you overcome and fix a lot of your vocal problems. Now you're just working to make sure you don't lose that momentum, right? So that's vocal maintenance. But a lot of people are at this other spot. They are hitting a plateau. A plateau means you're not seeing growth anymore. Maybe you never did. Your voice is just cruising along, right? And if you're really talented, you may feel like, hey, it's enough to get by. Like, I don't need to develop my voice anymore. Everybody's happy. I'm able to release tracks that I'm proud of. I'm able to do shows that I like and my crowd and my audience loves what I'm doing. That's fine. But here's the thing. I want you to be very honest with yourself and ask yourself, is this the best I can do? And I mean this, not based on other people's expectations of you, not based on you comparing yourself to other people. I'm talking about you comparing yourself to you, right? Are you noticing that there is some room for growth? And this could be on all fronts. This could be, is your breath capacity the fullest it could be? Is your vocal health in tip-top shape? Is your resonance and clarity and speed the fastest it could be? Things like that. And the answer to most singers' questions, whether you're a professional, an amateur, a beginner, most people's answers are no, <laughs> okay? I'm just gonna be honest, if we're really real, like is it enough to do well and be successful? Possibly. But if it's not your best, only you know your best, right? If it's not the best that you can do, chances are your vocal regimen, whatever you're doing, your vocal exercises that you're doing right now have turned into a simple vocal warm up for you. And what I mean by that is these vocal exercises that you're doing right now, if you're not seeing any growth with your voice, they're just waking up your vocal cords. They're just helping you maintain. And if your goal, is to be better. You've got to do something different than what you're already doing. And I know it's hard to admit, <laughs> especially if you've been doing the same thing for a long time. I'll be honest, a lot of people are comfortable doing what they've been doing. But anytime you're looking to grow, to be better, to expand, to do more, it always requires you to be out of your comfort zone. Okay, so let's talk about the sweet spot of a vocal regimen. All right, this is my favorite part. 
<laughs> so the sweet spot of a vocal regimen is where it, one, it challenges you mentally. I know you probably weren't expecting me to talk about your mental state, but it means that for you to do this exercise well, you have to focus. It's not something you can do while you're doing other things yet. It's something that you are still learning. You're still grasping it. It's training your ear. You're hearing the scale. You're, you're trying to match the pitches, right? Or you're doing the exercise and you're realizing like it is a bit of a challenge and you can't necessarily do it 100% all the time well, right? And it takes quite a bit of focus for you to do it well. The other side of this, and the reason why I think this is fun <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of telling on myself right now is that it's kind of invigorating to be challenged. Let's keep it a buck. Like if you want to enjoy your regimen, having a little level of challenge in it is good. You, you will get so bored <laughs> doing things that are easy. Even if it's comfortable, it's not challenging you. Therefore, it's not stimulating you at all. Now, there's a level of consistency that is required to master anything at all. And sometimes it won't be fun. But for the most part, if you have to be focused and if you need to be like, okay, well, I didn't get that, that, that scale correctly as well as I could have. Let me focus on if I could do it better on the next one. It gives you a goal to focus on in every specific exercise that you have, right? So that's a good sign for you to know you're in the sweet spot. If it's mentally stimulating, if it means that you have to focus. Now there is an extreme of this. This is how you know you're not in the sweet spot and you're venturing into uh, too much too soon territory or too hard. And that is if it requires so much mental focus that it is frustrating for you to do, okay? This means that instead of being like, okay, I didn't get it here, but let me get it here, and you nail it sometimes, and sometimes you don't, it's the difference between never getting it right and trying it over and over and over again and getting frustrated with the entire process. That's not helpful for growth either because it's overwhelming because it makes you lower your confidence. If you're never getting it right, it means that you don't understand the concepts yet that are required to do the exercise properly. So there's probably most likely a prerequisite, something that you should master before you do that exercise. That's where I come in as a vocal coach. With my students, one of the first things I do is help a student realize through practice and through actual real-time instruction the things that they need to be doing to do the exercise properly. My goal in a session is to make sure that they know how to do it well and not just mentally, but can actually do it well at least once in the session, okay? They need to know what right feels like before I can send them out in the wild to practice that exercise on their own because without knowing what right feels like, they're going to be doing it incorrectly over and over again and that is going to cause more damage than good. That's going to cause you to build the wrong type of, of muscle memory. This is why having a coach guide you is very important because if you're doing these exercises on your own, how do you know that you're doing them properly? You just have to make sure that what you're doing is making you a better singer. Not all vocal exercises are created equal. And just because it's not for you right now, that doesn't mean the exercise is bad necessarily. It could just mean it's not for where you are at your skill level. Also, if an exercise is fun, right, <laughs> and easy, okay, so you're not seeing any growth in it, it could be used as maintenance and even a vocal warm-up. But you need to know that because of the level you are right now, that it's not necessarily going to, you're not going to see growth with that particular exercise. Are you getting it? I think this is important to know, <laughs> especially if you're trying to fix your own vocal problems using solutions you find, which is important. I think it's the first step in taking your vocal transformation into your own hands. There's a level of ownership that needs to be there. If you're not looking, then how much do you really care, right? <laughs> so if you're here watching this video, chances are 
you do care about growing your voice. You do want to know, is your vocal regimen working for you or not? So good. You've passed (laughs) the first stage, okay? Now, the second thing to help you know that you are in the sweet spot of a vocal regimen is how it feels in your body and in your voice while you're in the middle of doing the exercise. This is so important. So the mental stimulation we just talked about, but the physical feeling, do you feel fatigued while you're doing the exercise? Meaning your voice is getting very tired um, to the point where after you do the exercise, everything you do afterwards feels too difficult. Chances are there are one or two things happening. One, you are most likely doing the exercise improperly. So that could mean that you are not quite ready for that exercise. Or two, there is just, it's too much in the context of your entire regimen. That's something that's very important too. Stamina and conditioning is a part of vocal growth. So even if you have a beautiful voice right now, if you find yourself, if you're singing some songs at a show or you're recording in the studio, if you find that your voice feels tired frequently, that means the demand that you're putting on your voice is too much for your voice at the stage it is right now. And that means you need to condition your voice to be more resilient by using the proper vocal technique and using the right vocal exercises. So if your vocal regimen is taking all your gas, it's better to start slow, build the frequency over time. So instead of practicing every single day, doing all 10 vocal exercises, maybe you do five exercises and you do it three times a week. See how you feel when you're doing your regimen, when it's shorter, things like that. Even the exercise itself, is it in the proper part of your voice? Like, is it solving the problem or is it making it worse, right? So there's a level of of a sweet spot there where it should feel like you are, this is the best way I can describe it. It's where you have to focus right mentally, but physically you're also trying to train the muscles that all the muscles that are used for singing to move. So it's like a fine motor skill should never feel like you're lifting heavy weights, right? It should feel like if you were trying to pinpoint something very small. So like the, like the twitch muscle twitch fibers is what they call them. You'll feel a little bit of fatigue, right? But it's not exhausting to the point where everything's locked up, right? So if your tongue is getting stuck, for example, and it feels like the notes are all sliding when you're doing your vocal regimen, chances are you need to incorporate a stretch, right? And shorten the regimen. Okay. So that's how, you know, you're in the sweet spot is if it's your voice can be resilient and feels good while you're doing the regimen, your voice shouldn't feel fatigued, maybe mentally a little bit like, Ooh, I got to focus. And maybe you're not getting all of it perfectly every time, but it should never feel exhausting or make your voice feel worse at the end. The third and most important sign that you are in the sweet spot with your current vocal regimen is that it is yielding you results, okay? What are we doing if you're not seeing results, right? It needs to be manageable, tangible. We need to know, okay, if you're wanting to expand your vocal range, over the course of a reasonable amount of time, and you could talk with your vocal coach to determine what is a reasonable amount of time, are you seeing that that exercise is helping you achieve that goal, right? Sometimes it's not necessarily about how well you do the exercise because you can condition your voice and train your voice to do the exercise well because it's familiar, right? Over time with repetition, it gets comfortable. But the biggest sign that it is working for you is that the techniques that you are using in that, in that regimen is directly applicable to the songs that you are singing. Okay. That's when you know you, you're really seeing results. So if you're doing vocal exercises like vocal run exercises and things like that, and you notice that, okay, I've been increasing the speed on it. Now, when I try to do that breakdown of the Jasmine Sullivan run that I've been trying to break down or the Brandy run here, 
it's easier for me to do where it wasn't before. That's tangible, especially if you could record yourself and hear how much faster and clearer and cleaner your vocal runs are sounding versus when you started. That's a good sign that your regimen is working for you. That lets you know you are in the sweet spot, right? So if you are trying to see your voice transform, I think it's very important for you to really gauge if your current regimen is mentally stimulating, not overwhelming, (laughs) not underwhelming, and is it comfortable to do on your voice, not overwhelming the voice, not hurting the voice, and is it yielding results, right? Don't just do a vocal warm up. Understand that conditioning your voice is important for vocal growth. If you want to know what you can do right now to help improve your voice, go ahead and book a vocal diagnostic session with me live one-on-one on Zoom. I also have an R&B Singers Masterclass coming up. And I will leave the links below. That's IndieArtistSchool.com for a one-on-one vocal diagnostic session. And you could learn more about my six-month one-on-one vocal coaching program. I create vocal exercises for your voice, for where you are. And also throughout the program, I can gauge if we are maintaining or if we are always moving forward into growth so that you're always in the sweet spot with your voice. Until next time, happy singing.